Hello again. My name is Tom Singer, and this is Concert Cues. Billing Symphony uh, sponsoring, as you know, if you're watching this, Sukin Series, which is smaller venue performances. And we're here today to interview Scott Jeppesen, who's with the Rocky Mountain Jazz Collective. And we're going to talk about a performance that's coming up on June 5th. That's right. And what are we playing? So this is going to be a, this is Anything Goes, the tribute to the music of Cole Porter. So how do you pull that off? Uh, you get to play Cole Mo Porter's music? <laughs> We, we do. It's been a journey to, to get to that point. That's, this concert was originally supposed to happen last October. We were supposed to do a tribute to Thelonious Monk. Um, COVID said, well, we can't do a full big band. And I had already started writing that music, and we wanted to do something smaller. So we said, OK, maybe three horns and a rhythm section. Um, and I said, OK, but I already did the work on Monk. we got to find another theme. So we came up with Cole Porter, um, which is not a downgrade at all. I, I love no. Cole's music. It's just different, that's all. Just different, yeah. And. Um, <laughs> So, so I had the, the idea to do the, the six-piece group accompanied or with, with um, several local singers. We could feature some of our local vocalists. And um, so we put that together. That ended up getting postponed until June 5th. And, um, so, but we, uh, yeah, in, in the process of getting, you know, appro approved to do these arrangements and to be able to do the live stream, which this concert will be live streamed. And you're um, using copyrighted music still. Right, it is copyrighted music. And we actually got permission from the Cole Porter Estate to to allow us to do that, so we're very grateful for for that. And um, so yeah, it's, uh, they were really really great to work with, and I think you know eager to get uh, Cole Porter's music out there in the public for people to hear. <laughs> That's great. And so what what are some of the pieces that you're going to be playing that people might recognize? Uh, we're, we're well, anything goes is kind of the the title track for the for the show. Um, we're doing um, every time we say goodbye. Um, uh, I've got you under my skin. It's one of one of his more fa famous ones because of the way the Frank Sinatra did it. Um, we're doing a song called Miss Otis Regrets. I get a kick out of you. Um, we're gonna do. A, we're actually gonna open the show with an arrangement of I Love You, which is a famous song of his, and that's just gonna be an instrumental. And it was actually arranged by um, one of our students here at MSUB that just graduated a week ago, two weeks ago, wow. uh, Alex Bush. So, so he arranged that one for us. And, but most of the arrangements are your work? Most, yeah, all the rest of the arrangements are arrangements that I did uh, to feature these singers. So the, the singers that we have that are joining us are, we, we've got Amy Schendel, which everyone's very familiar with Amy here in town. Um, you can't live in Billings and not know Amy. Uh, so she's doing a couple songs. Um, we have um, one of our, our students who will be a senior this next year at uh, MSUB, Emerald Hart, is joining us. Um, uh, all, well, no, I can't say all bias aside, with complete bias, but also without bias aside, uh, my daughter will be joining us for two songs, Very Hannah cool. Jeppesen. She's a uh, senior at Skyview High School and graduating in a couple weeks, and she'll be a music major here in, and, next year. And one of Amy's students. Yeah, right, or one of Amy's students. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, Marie Smith is a, she's originally from Montana, moved and spent a number of years back in New York City, and um, now she has a, she's working at the St. Labre School out um, hmm. two, a couple hours away, I don't know it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, she's an amazing, amazing jazz vocalist. So it'll be real great to have them all in there. And and uh, that's a, a spectacular lineup. And then who who's actually playing the instruments? So the instruments for this one, um, I actually have two the two of my two friends that are coming out for the Ellington show that as a, you know, that uh, the Far East Suite um, are coming back out again. So they're making the trip twice in a couple of weeks. So on trumpet, we've got Josh, Josh Aguiar, and on alto sax, we have uh, Ian Vo, both coming from L.A. Um, with, with me, I'm the third horn. Uh, and then the rhythm section is Eric Olson on piano, uh, Alex Bush, the student who arranged uh, I Love You, uh, and then um, my... My favorite drummer in the world. That's my uh, my wife, Roxanne Jeppesen, will be playing. Uh, will be playing drums with us, and uh, yeah. and that I say that with all bias aside. Yeah. Well, and uh, that's a little unusual to have a female drummer. It is. Yeah, and uh, she will she'll hit you in the mouth if you say so. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, she's uh, which stick, I guess. <laughs> you know, I you know I think um, I think that there is a a real benefit to to that, and it's. The, uh, without going too over the top into that, that topic, the, uh, um, you know, music in general is a somewhat uh, patrilineal 
uh, field where you know we the, most of the great composers that we know and most of the great musicians that we know are are men uh, and it's including in jazz unless you happen to be a singer and then it's okay to be a woman um, but I think that there is uh, something that's very uh, sensitive and wonderful about the way that women play other instruments. They, they play. I, I think that they play them differently than men, and I think that that's a good thing. And it's. It doesn't necessarily mean that one is better than the other, but it's. It's. It's just. It's a different vibe, and. Um, and uh, Ro Roxanne is one of those drummers that has just these. Um, not physically, but enormous ears <laughs> that she she just hears everything that's going on, and she's sensitive to what everybody's trying to say and do musically, and she's always contributing, and it's. And uh, I think that that makes her my my favorite drummer. So. Yeah, that's very cool. And how long have you known one another? I'm just. We've uh, we, we went to high school together. Huh? So and I was a year ahead of her. So I think I've probably known her since 1992. And uh, yeah, end of June we'll be celebrating 25 years together. So. Very cool. <laughs> very cool. And it sounds like you're doing okay here in Billings. Yeah, it's actually you know we're we're we're, we're loving it. The uh, you know our, our especially our, our high schooler that's graduating. She struggled a little bit when she first uh, when we first made the move, but now she's grateful that we did. And um, you know my wife is actually teaching uh, orchestra at Will James Middle School this year, ah. and um, everyone's really actually really enjoying it. It's uh, the town has embraced us and made us feel welcome and. I don't know about all the stickers on cars that say we're full, go home, but um, <laughs> I just say, say they're not talking about us. That's okay. Yeah, there's mixed feelings, but right. it, it doesn't take long, you know. You're never a Montanan. I, I grew up in northern Wyoming, and I'm, I'll am i never be a Montanan either. Right. So it's, it's, it's all fair. Uh, you also did the arrangements for the, I mean, I interviewed Amy for the Christmas concert mm -hmm. and um, didn't have a chance to talk to you about that at the time, but you also did the arrangements for that. Yeah, and, and and talk a little bit about what's involved in arranging uh, a, a piece. Mm -hmm. What what makes the difference between a good arrangement and a mediocre arrangement? Uh, well, I think there's there's several different layers of that because good bad is really a subjective, you know, thing. It's it's hard to you can't put a, a numerical assessment, <laughs> you know, on <laughs> right. Uh, right. on good or bad, and so. There's several things that I always think about when I'm playing or when I'm writing music is, um, I mean, the first and foremost is with the Christmas stuff, there's been so many arrangements of Christmas songs. And there's been a lot of arrangements of Cole Porter's music as well. That if I'm going to arrange something, I, I want to be contributing something new. So I don't want to arrange something that just sounds incredibly stock, that it sounds like every other arrangement that anyone ever did of Silent Night, right? Um, so, so I, I want to have my own take on it. I want to. So, I, I tend to like listen to other versions of it. I mull it around in my head. I'll do things where I try singing the song to myself in uh, in different meters or in uh, putting different rhythmic concepts. You know, wh whatever I can to come up with something that's original. Um, uh, then, of course, you know, the most important thing of all is, you know, is is it going to sound good to the audience, right? And as I think anyone who performs music knows that. You know, this idea of sounding good doesn't necessarily always mean um, sounding pretty or consonant, right? There's there's give and take, there's push and pull um, with with everything in music. And um, with my students, I talk a lot about composing as being like writing a story. That you, if you have a story where it's just a protagonist and there's no antagonist, it makes for a really boring story. Right. You got to have that antagonist. Con conflict matters. Exactly. So so there's got to be places in there where there's some tension and and uh, so they're they're along for the journey, but they you know it's something that they enjoy. But then the other thing that's also really important is making sure that the music is um, enjoyable for the musicians to play. Um, and so typically, I think that's where a lot of arrangements that I would classify as being bad arrangements um, fall short is it might sound good to the audience uh, they may have put it into their computer and it sounds good but the um, in the end when it gets put in front of real musicians are they bored when they're playing it are they you know because if, if they're bored when they're playing it it's gonna sound bored to the audience at the end and um, the really good arrangers are able to make it they're able to follow that line where it makes it it's something that sounds good to the audience but it's also something that's really fun mm -hmm. for people to play in the band um, you know, our, one of our trombone players uh, for the Far East Suite, um, and he was on the Ellington Nutcracker. He wasn't on the Christmas show because we had to keep it all local. Um, but he's one of the most prolific big band writers over the last 
20, 30 years, um, Eric Richards down in Sheridan. Um, and that's one of the things I really love about Eric's music is, you know, he's, I've played a ton of his charts. I play in his band, uh, which we, you know, we had a concert cut short <laughs> a couple weeks ago, but, um, electrical storm. Oh, it good. Killed the power. Um, but, uh, you know, so I played a lot of his music and his charts are always really, really enjoyable and fun to play. Yeah. I mean, the, my experience singing, I know exactly what you mean when you're, when you're singing something that just doesn't seem to grab you. you right. Know, yeah. It, it makes a difference. Yeah, and, you know, some people, in, especially in a big band, a lot of times people won't understand trombone. It's, it's kind of the mystery instrument, right? They go, right? Um, so a lot of times um, writers will just give the trombone just, you know, do, do. But, but, but the trombones can play a whole lot more than that. Oh, they're, yeah. you know, they're great musicians. So you want to be, you want to throw them a bone, give them some, you know, stuff that's fun to play. And... A trombone. Right, exactly. <laughs> throw, throw the trombone, yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of the stuff I'm always thinking about when I'm writing and, um, you know, and that's, so that's, that's, that's my good and bad meters. Yeah, okay. Well, you've, you've talked an awful lot about students at MSUB and, and I, I'm a I'm a graduate of EMC mm -hmm. uh, a long long time ago, and uh, I got to say uh, the music department's grown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so let's talk a little bit about that. Uh, what have you guys been accomplishing up here? Uh, I think we've accomplished a lot. So I mean, uh, student-wise, we've got I mean the, the our number of students are growing, but more importantly, the uh, the quality and the engagement of the students are really really has really grown um, from you know over the last four years just in the time that I've been here which I'm not taking credit but the um, uh, it's you know you'll the, enjoy the experience anyway exactly I'm, I'm along for the ride I just kind of push here and there and the um, yeah the, the caliber of student and the dedication of student is um, when I first came on on board here it's never heard anybody practicing anywhere and now like during the school year the the hallways are just full of honks and noises and sounds and, uh, and it's, it's wonderful because that's that's what you want in a music department is to hear people making music and um, you have to practice even if it doesn't sound good exactly <laughs> uh, we have a brand new recording studio which we're sitting in right now uh -huh. and uh, uh, that was an adventure to, to get it here but it's we've got several projects that have uh, that have uh, come to fruition in, in the studio already and it's it's running at full force um, we have a, uh, a brand new degree that uh, John and I wrote, John Roberts and I wrote this, this last year that's uh, just been approved by the state and it'll be officially online in the fall and it's, it's a degree in commercial music. Commercial so, music. Yeah, so if you're a, if you want to do rock and roll or you want to be country or singer songwriter or jazz or uh, rap or whatever, there's, you know, you can still come and be educated musically. Um, and then one of the most so you, so you don't you don't mean music for commercials you mean music that makes money yeah exactly right yes okay so so it's basically anything that we don't classify as uh, as kind of um, in that Western classical music tradition is okay. what we kind of deem as being uh, commercial although if you're really more of a classical player and you want to do commercial you're welcome to do that as well you're just um, the degree is really built around the the ideas uh, the practices of creation so there's uh, two semesters of improvisation that you have to take there's uh, a lot of composition and arranging and keyboarding and stuff that the other degrees um, that we, we all of our degrees have some level of creation in them but this one is going to be really really heavy into that songwriting is another one um, uh, introduction to the music business well so. and, and, and you and John both have I mean you've got an interesting list of people that you've played with and for mm -hmm. and all that and so does John yeah so uh, you know something about that world yep yeah, yeah we've been around there and it's a uh, you know, in, in the end, it's my philosophy about music is that it's just 12 notes. It's, you know, it's, we're, we're still today using the same 12 notes that Beethoven was using and that Bach was using. It's, we just arrange them a little bit differently and it sounds like something different. And it's fascinating how many different combinations you can make of those 12 notes, right? isn't it? <laughs> of course, there is the fact that they repeat for about eight octaves that we can hear, right? Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And different timbres of instruments and things like that. Right. Instruments have certainly changed. And, but maybe one of the most exciting things uh, of all, too, is that we, we have a new faculty member uh, uh, that, that's joining us this, this fall. Our longtime vocal professor, Doug Nagel, retired at the end of last year. And um, our, uh, 
our new guy is uh, Darren Small, who's been in and around Billings for a long time, fantastic singer, great teacher. Yeah, and uh, been a soloist with the symphony a number of times. Yep, great guy. Yep, yeah, so we're very excited to have him coming aboard as well. Well, that's very cool. Um, I was wondering if he was going to be one of the one of the singers with this this one, but it's not really his genre, uh, yeah. from what I know. <laughs> if, eventually, though, he's going to be around it, and so <laughs> he, he loves the music. He's it's he has he's done he's performed less in in that style, but he's done a lot of Broadway, and it's it's, it's cool. a short jump from Broadway to jazz. That's right. Okay, so we're G June fifth, uh, seven thirty. Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock at yep. where? At the Babcock Theater. Very good. Yeah. Look forward to seeing you then. All Thank right, you, Scott. Good. All right, thanks. Thank you.